Hello everyone, my name is Jaskirin Deepkur Josan. I am Assistant Professor at Department of Forensic Science and Chemistry at Trim University. Here I am going to uh, deliver a topic on a topic patent testing 1 and we will be uh, reading about the introduction of patent testing. When a child is born, he or she carries a DNA from both the parents and that is in equal form that is from mother and a father. And during forensic uh, investigation, when a person is alleged as a, uh, being a, f a biological father, a uh, the scientist have to find out whether the given person or a uh, male uh, person is a biological father of a alleged child. So, patent testing is an applied science that utilizes basic principles in genetics, immunology, biochemistry and statistics. It's for sure that uh, in a patent testing we need DNA samples and for that we have to know about genetics. However, since an analysis of inheritance is ultimately dependent upon the understanding of basic genetics. Now we'll be seeing about the basic genetics. In our, uh, we get a DNA from both our parents that is from half DNA is from our mother, half DNA is from father. So in uh, this concept is being utilized in forensic genetics. For that, the patent testing evaluates the passage of selected genetic characteristics between the parents, an accused or putative father and the biological mother. Here we are talking about only paternity disputes. So the paternity word is, derived, uh, is related to male. So here we only are going to uh, talk about the uh, sample that we will be getting from a male member and their possible offspring. The control of genetic characteristics and markers resides in a group of unique molecules called nucleic acids and in nucleic acids we have DNA and we have RNA. These biomolecules contain chemical information that are transmitted into protein and whole process is known as central dogma. So if a child have a unique genetic marker and it doesn't match with the alleged father then a child is not being a biological ch child of that uh, male. But if the male uh, DNA or the um, uh, male genetic marker matches exactly with the child person or ch offspring, then it will be the uh, child will is a biological ch child of a male. If a child displays a genetic marker, genetic marker not found in putative father or biological mother, the putative father cannot be a biological father because we already knew that the, the DNA is from a mother and a father and if it's not the same then we will not say that it's a biological father. This is known as the direct evidence of non-paternity and it is also known as first order exclusion. So here uh, it's a very uh, big thing here that the when a person uh, we have to go for this process, we never go for inclusion purpose, we always go for exclusion. In forensic science, most of the samples are for exclusion rather than inclusion. We can very well say that the person is not a father, but in, if we were not say that the person is a father, that is a, a topic of some uh, misunderstanding or we can say there can be some debate regarding that. If a putative father fails to transmit a particular genetic trait to the child, he may also be excluded. That doesn't mean that that father is a, not a biological, but he fails to transfer that gene or a, that a trait to a child. This is indirect evidence of paternity and it is also known as second order exclusion, congenitant of the putative father's exact genotype. So in the nature and the design of paternity testing, it's a Patent tests are designed to protect falsely accused men in cases of disputed parentage. They do this by detecting exclusionary evidence while the examination office select genetic markers in the putative father, mother and the child. If putative father cannot be excluded by this analysis, he included in a population of a man who could be the biological father. So these are the uh, various factors that are we have to uh, keep in mind while analyzing the sample. The number of the genetic alleles, the amount and the number we are analyzing. Incidence or the frequency of these, like how many copy numbers of those alleles are present in a father, mother and a child. Ease of detecting these genetic markers by appropriate laboratory procedure. It's for sure if we don't have an appropriate uh, laboratory procedure, there is no use of doing this analysis. 
economical feasibility of the laboratory procedure because they are very time consuming as well as they have cost effective so if a laboratory have that much uh, finance or they have they are economically strong then also it's, it's uh, feasible that a uh, scientist should uh, do this analysis so for the analysis there is a one system that is known as hla system and the term hla refers to human leukocyte antigen it's a gene that comes uh, from a father as well as from a mother and they both combine and the, uh, they are being found in the offspring the hla system is a single most powerful genetic system of general use in patent system technology is also established that hla testing is extended to prenatal assessment of a paternity using cultured amniotic cell if a, even if a child is not born and a father accuse a mother that the uh, uh, unborn child is not his they can even go for a hla system for paternity testing for that they can do use one uh, two processes either exclusionary power and inclusionary power in exclusionary power the hla phenotyping is a protecting falsely accused man is reflected in its high cumulative probability of exclusion so in here this it uh, uh, is mainly used in 90% of cases and hla has equal importance in inclusionary evidence in a form of paternity index that we'll be uh, studying later the paternity index evaluates the probability of putative father is a biological father in form of statistical index means it means that uh, whether that putative father it, if he considered as a biological fa uh, father of that child how much percentage of its state is present in overall population so here the paternity index we came come into the light when the calculated paternity index exceeds 20 this probability is significant is considered significant in statistical terms here is a very good example uh, of inheritance here we can see there are uh, two genes from a and b c uh, is for mother c and d is for father, from father and if we combine these four alleles we will get four children out of that a will combine with d b will combine with c a will combine with c and b will combine with d and here we can see in the uh, section of children like both the alleles are from mother and father half is from mother half is from father if we are getting these type of data then we can only say that the alleged uh, father is a biological father of a children but for example if a, a child doesn't have that a2 gene and uh, instead of a2 they are having a3 or a4 but the father is not having that particular lead so we will not say that the alleged father is a biological father even a difference if of a one allele they then we can exclude that person being a biological father of a children now let's go with the paternity index it's a compares the likelihood that a genetic marker that a alleged father passed to ch child to the probability that the randomly selected unrelated man of similar ethnic background could pass allele to the child so here what we see we haven't uh, uh, there's a very big uh, problem in dna that we can't be sure whether that particular gene is only responsible that it can only be transferred from one person to another is there any other person in that population will can be able to transfer that allele to another so that is why we have to go for paternity index suppose a x is a chance that the alleged father could transmit the obligate gene and y is the chance that some other man of the same race for races for example caucasian uh, there can be mongoloids they can be negroid so how much chance is that the same race and but a unrelated man can transfer that gene to the another person should be transmitted allele so if x uh, got a value 1 then the af is homozygous means alleged father will be homozygous for the allele of the pet interest and if the uh, the value becomes as can come as 0.5 then the alleged father is heterozygous the potential of randomly selected man to pass the obligate allele is determined by the using a database which risk the frequency distribution of individual alleles within a genetic system so there is a very uh, much uh, database is present online uh, where we can uh, compare it with the another population whether this gene is all can be transferred from another person or not 
So, uh, with the paternity index, we can go with the uh, combined paternity index where we can uh, combine multiple individuals and go for their calculations. Now, go, uh, probability of paternity. A probability of paternity is the measure of strength of one's belief in a hypothesis that the tested man is a father. Suppose we got a sample from a, a, a pers a, a, a doctors that whether the alleged father is a father, is a biological father. What will we will be doing? We will be uh, creating an hypothesis that the tested man is a father. So, for the correct probability must be based on all the evidence of the cases. So, uh, whether testing we have to go for the testimony of mother, we have to go for the testimony of uh, witness, man uh, testimony will be there, non-genetic evidence should also be analyzed along with the genetic evidence. So, the probability of paternity is based upon Weiss theorem which provi provides a method for determining a posterior probability based upon the genetic results of testing of mother, child and alleged father. In order to determine the probability of paternity, an assumption must be made as to the pro uh, prior probability that the tested man is a true biological father. We can't exclude uh, during testing. We should be uh, creating a hypothesis that whether the, uh, the tested man is a true biological father. The prior probability of paternity is the strength of one's belief that the tested man is a father based on only on the non-genetic evidences. And in, uh, during in genetic evidences, it is necessary that we have to analyze both uh, uh, all the three uh, testimony. Like we have to go for the mother's DNA child's DNA and father's DNA and this is the formula that test hypothesis that the accused is a biological father of a child. If POP means probability of paternity of 99% reflects 99% probability that hypothesis is correct and 1% it is not and CPI it also will uh, covers the base formula. So this is the formula. If uh, it's a paternity of 0.50, which is 50%, that means that without testing any of the parties, there is a 50% chance that the related father is a father, and 50% chance is that it's a not his or he is not a father. During the analysis, we have to uh, uh, analyze the evidence in two forms: either it's the exclusionary evidence or it's the inclusionary evidence. To obligate the paternity, uh, paternal uh, alleles in the child do not have corresponding alleles of the alleged father. In exclusion, the child will not have an allele the, uh, and it will not be matching with the alleged father. But in inclusion, the alleles will be matching with the alleged father. So, this is how we will divide the evidence in two parts, exclusion and inclusion. Patenti exclusion are based on the known inheritance characteristics of select genetic markers established through countless family studies. The most conclusive evidence of non paternity is the first order exclusion. In this, the child possesses a unique antigen not demonstrated of either mother or father. There might be some mutation. During the transcription or translation, there can be some mutation that can lead to an, a different type of allele that is not either not present in a father nor on the mother. So, we can go for their exclusion here because we are the sample is not matching with any of the parent. The second order exclusion is indirect evidence of non-paternity. The putative father fails to pass the particular gene to the supposed child. Most experts in paternity testing do not consider presence of single uh, second order exclusion to the definite evidence of non-paternity, although these exclusions are not absolute proof of non-paternity, so they should be considered as a highly suggestive of it. This may follow the most biological fathers would have passed the gene of the interest to their children and the presence of genetic variants that might negate this exclusion as extremely rare in most of the racial groups. So, there is a most uh, most of the chances that it is for sure a mother and father will transfer their alleles to an, their child. But in once in a blue moon that there can be a chances that a mother or, or father are not able to transfer. So, that does not mean it does not conclude that it is a known paternity. No, they we have to go for further studies.
So this is the mathematical mathematical formula that is P paternity index is equal to, uh, paternity exclusion is equal to one minus a square plus two ab where a is a frequency of allele the child inherited inherited from a father and the frequency of obligate allele is de determined for each group ratio. It all depends upon the racial groups and how much the frequency uh, of a uh, father is that he can transmit that allele to another to their child. So, in probability of inclusion, where the probability is uh, inclusion is equal to frequency of all the men in the population who contain that particular allele and matches to obligate the paternal allele of the child. So, in inclusion, if a per, per test has given reveals no exclusion, that means the putative father or the alleged father is the true biological father. And this evidence is represented in the form of paternity index or relative chance calculation. These calculations evaluate the probability that this putative father passed a particular array of genes to his supposed progeny in comparison to random male in his race. So, in inc inclusion, the calculation can be of different methods. The most widely accepted approaches are comparison of sperm or the comparison of man methods. Here, in a comparison of sperm, the method is based on assumption of one sperm fertilized with the mother's egg from a child in paternity cases. And in comparison ratio, it is then made between a probability of the sperm that come from a putative father, whether that sperm come from another person of the same population. And in comparison of men, the estimation of how many men is given a number with the particular race cannot be excluded as a father of the particular child. The typing of putative father and his assess to a mother are not part of this type of assessment. Since it does not take these factors into account, so uh, the figure may be overestimate the number of possible biological father. So, these, uh, this factor is not taken much into consideration here. So, it can be concluded that during the paternity disputes and analyzing cases, a father, a three samples are being taken, a father, mother and the child and if the whole the DNA is uh, can be found matches with the child, then only the, uh, the alleged father can be considered as a true biological father of a child. Thank you.